Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. In this video, I'm going to give you some vital information that you need to know in order to do well in part three of the IELTS speaking test. I'll also reveal some key mistakes that many candidates make and explain how to avoid making them yourself. To do well in part three, it's important to understand three things. The purpose of part three, what the examiner is looking for, and the key mistakes that lead to a low score. I'll be covering all of these in this video, but first I want to give you some key facts about IELTS speaking part three. There are five main things you need to know. One, part three is a two-way discussion with the examiner lasting four to five minutes. Two, you'll be asked more questions about your part two topic. Three, it gives you the opportunity to show a greater range of speaking skills. Four, the examiner's questions will encourage you to express your thoughts, feelings and opinions. And five, you'll only be assessed on your English language skills not on the content of what you actually say. The questions in IELTS Speaking Part 3 will be more abstract than in Part 1. That is, they'll be about ideas and concepts rather than about you. For example, a Part 1 question about friends might be, what kind of things do you like to do with your friends? But a Part 3 question about friends could be something like this. Why do you think children can make friends more easily than adults? A part one question about money might be, would you like to be rich someday? Whereas a part three question about money would be more like this. It is said that happiness cannot be bought with money. Do you agree? A part one question about travel might be, what's your favorite type of holiday? For the same topic in part three, you'll get questions more like this. Do you think traveling to another country can change the way people think? As you can see, part three questions are much more challenging than part one questions, but don't let them worry you. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to tackle them with confidence and to avoid the mistakes that many people make. Before we get on to those mistakes, I want to talk quickly about the purpose of part three to help you understand why some of the questions are so challenging. The purpose of this final part of the speaking test is to push you to the limit of your ability. The examiner needs to do this in order to accurately assess the full extent of your English language skills. This means that some of the questions need to be difficult. Now let's look at the common mistakes many candidates make which prevent them from scoring highly. There are four main reasons why people often get a lower score than they expect or are capable of achieving. These are 1. Their answers are too short 2. They get stressed over difficult questions 3. They don't listen carefully to the question and 4. They don't fully understand the question. I'll go through them one by one. First, don't give really short answers. You won't be expected to give a long talk in answer to each question, but your answers will need to be longer than in part one. Aim for three to five sentences. You can develop them with explanations and examples. I cover developing part three answers, including lots of sample answers, on the website and through a separate video on my YouTube channel. I put the web page link in the notes below this video. Don't try to rush through this last section of the test because you're finding it challenging and you're dying to get to the end. If you do give short answers, the examiner will just keep asking you more questions until the time's up. It's far better to answer each one properly and not to have to answer so many of them. Secondly, Try not to get stressed over difficult questions. Getting into a panic won't help you. Accept that you'll probably get some and learn how to tackle them. 
The other video and web page I've just mentioned will show you how. The third common reason people lose marks in part three is that they don't listen carefully to the question. It's so easy to hear just one or two key words and think you know what's being asked. Very often you'll be wrong, especially with these more abstract questions. In the exam, that's a serious mistake to make because you probably won't answer the question appropriately and this will lose you marks. So listen carefully to the whole question before answering. The final issue is not understanding the question. If you don't understand the question, then you've got a real problem. If there's just one key word in the question that you're unsure of, you probably aren't going to be able to answer it properly. What most candidates don't know is that you're allowed to ask one or two questions during part three, if you really need to. There are just three things you can ask. One, can you repeat the question, please? This is when you want to hear the question again. Two, can you explain what you mean? When you want the examiner to rephrase the question. And three, can you explain what the word means, please? when you want the examiner to explain a specific word. These are the only questions you're allowed to ask and only do so if absolutely necessary. Ask no more than two questions in total. Asking the examiner a couple of questions won't affect your score, but do keep it to two and don't ask them anything else. Now that you have a better understanding of what part three is all about and the challenges it presents, it's time to learn more about the specific types of questions you're likely to get and how to develop great answers. Click the link in the notes below to visit my webpage entitled IELTS Speaking Part 3 – How to Impress the Examiner and watch my YouTube video – Six Common Types of Part 3 Questions and How to Create Great Answers. I'll see you there. Bye for now.